Hey, welcome back everybody to episode two of the epic tuna trip that we had. Uh, so last week we were fishing about 35 miles offshore off the coast of Astoria, Oregon. Uh, we're getting a lot of singles in the morning, single hookups, um, but it was consistent. We were getting uh, hit probably every 10 or 15 minutes or so. And uh, things started to really heat up in the afternoon, so watch for that. Uh, watch, make sure you watch to the end too, because we're going to be repacking 21 tuna to make room for more. Uh, not ideal out in the ocean in a small boat, but uh, definitely a good problem to have. So watch till the end. I think I got him in the lung. I think that dude thought he was a whole lot bigger. That's not huge, but it sure fought like it was. Go fish, keep going out. We're scratching him out, buddy. Yeah. Now, here it is. Oh. Who's got this one? You do. Me? Yeah. You. Camera. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a pretty bloody shot, but that's all right. <laughs> that's a great fish. Great fish. <sighs> now, it seemed like the fish were getting larger uh, later in the afternoon. And when you spend the morning fighting fish that are 20 to 25 pounds uh, every few minutes, I don't care who you are, you're going to feel it. During the last episode, you saw how a tuna almost ripped the rod out of my hands. Well, watch what happens when I clear this rod in the afternoon. Whoa! What was that? Oh, I'm hooked up. I'm hooked up. I'm hooked up. Alright. Yep, we are hooked up. Okay, so. Do I need to be under you or over you? Where are you? Do you know? Try under. No, okay, now go back this way. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we're good. Gonna be close. I oh, think. here, I'll take it then. Yeah, I'm just about. To. I didn't realize you guys had a double going on. Yeah. Here. 
Oh man, that hook just came right out of him. Oh wow. That's 30 plus that pounds. shark got the bottom of them. Right. <laughs> what you think of these? <laughs> these were some great fish. The one I'm holding right now came in at 31 pounds. There's usually a pattern to fighting albacore. They initially hit the rod hard, make a big run. Then they come in without too much of a fuss until they see the boat. Then they make a deep diving run, sometimes several times. It's a blast, but it's exhausting at the same time. Now, I'm not playing games with this fish. I'm trying to reel down to my swivel so Mike can get a gaff on it. But the fish has other ideas. The shotgun rod is mounted on what's known as a rocket launcher, which is nothing more than a rod holder rack mounted on the roof of the boat. This rod's out the furthest at about 150 feet. Now when a tuna makes a run on this line, there's a lot of line to reel in. Now watch Jason tiring himself out working this fish. Remember what I said about when a tuna sees the boat? Why? <laughs> After you just gained all that line. Oh my god. Wow, I didn't think he could go anymore. Whoa, that's a good fish on there. That's just got a slouch on there. Nice. 
Now, when you're fishing for albacore out of a small boat, there's uh, two major things you're looking for. One is good fuel management, and the other one is good ice management. Uh, we had 21 fish on board at this point. Uh, my crew wanted to keep fishing, even though I thought we were pretty done. And uh, so they wanted to throw like one or two lines out and just kind of keep trolling around. Because our buddy boats that were out there, they were not ready to come home yet. Well, I was okay with that. The problem is we had to kind of shift things around. So we had to repack our coolers. And the only way to do that is to get all the fish out on the deck, kind of move things around and start over again and pack it all up again. So I'm a big believer is that you can't waste things that you're catching. Um, so we have to make sure that we have good ice management if we're gonna start catching more fish to uh, add to what we've already caught. So here's what it looked like. What do you think? Uh, uh, uh. We might as well put rods in the water and just keep trolling. Okay, you've been the manager of ice. I don't want to turn these into cat food. Can we handle it? Do you want to pull them out and repack it? I got two cats. <laughs> I got two cats. Do you, want, do you want me to help you repack them? I think we should repack them. All right, let's point, repack yeah. them. So last time I did, I just threw, I just slid them all into the deck, all right. moved stuff around, and put them back in. I can get all the rods out if you want to put us back in here. Well. I'm just a little worried there's going to be a lot of chaos going on. Well, how we, um, yeah, see the story isn't even good enough right now. We've got three fish here. Pretty cold. <laughs> Ooh, see, there's some sweethearts in there. Damn. I mean, that's a picture already. I see some fish here that would, uh, next week's Oregon Tuna Classic that would <laughs> be like, that one for sure. You want to just lay with the fish? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Get in here, Mike. I don't think I'll fish. <laughs> Let's just kneel down a little bit. <laughs> All right, say All tuna! Right. Tuna! <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go back, back into the pool and run it So by the time Jason repacked everything, it took them a while. We got the call from our buddy boats that they were done. I mean, it's a good thing my crew didn't mutiny when they heard that on the radio. But we were really happy with our catch on this trip. I mean, seven tuna per person is also about a day of processing time, especially since we do a lot of canning of our tuna. I hope you all enjoyed this episode. A special thanks to our buddy boats out there, Kuba Kuba, and as always, Riverbum. I appreciate you guys. Thanks for letting us tag along. As always, I respond to all comments. Join us in two weeks for our next fishing adventure, Tight Lines.